Since 1992, several species of Idaho's migratory salmon and trout have been listed as either endangered or threatened under the Endangered Species Act. As a result, the water needs of endangered trout influence the allocation of water resources for both land and water use throughout the region. Because the need for sound scientific information is critical, the National Science Foundation has funded a team of scientists in Idaho to research how fish development is affected by habitat. The biggest benefit that we hope to see from this research will be uh, a deeper insight into the quality of habitat and basically the needs of fish threatened and endangered species in Idaho that pertains to water use. The multidisciplinary research team is comprised of scientists from both the University of Idaho and Idaho State University and includes experts in molecular genomics, animal physiology, bioinformatics, endocrinology, and biochemistry. And this type of project requires a core of scientists to be able to carry it out. So everybody has to collaborate, everybody adds expertise to the particular questions that are being asked. The scientists have selected two species of fish as modeling systems for their research, the zebrafish and the rainbow trout. They're studying their adaptability as it relates to both their physiology and their genome, or their specific assortment of genes. Dr. Barry Robeson works at the zebrafish research facility located on the University of Idaho campus. So the zebrafish are like the lab rat. Uh, they grow fast in terms of generation time. So if you look at trout, they have a generation time, say, three years. Zebrafish have a generation time of three months. The zebrafish has the whole genome described. Mm -hmm. So we know a lot about the genetics of the zebrafish. In contrast, more of the existing research on rainbow trout has been done on its physiology, not as much as known about its genomics. This Idaho research is adding to the body of knowledge on endangered trout to better assess wild habitats and give a solid scientific basis upon which to manage water. Much of the team's research on the rainbow is conducted at the University of Idaho's Fish Culture Experiment Station, located in Hagerman, Idaho, the center of the trout industry in the U.S. Hagerman uh, has a natural water source uh, that's found no other place on earth. We have water that comes out of the rocks, if you will, in, uh, uh, in a spring-fed system that is the exact optimal temperature and uh, dissolved oxygen content for raising rainbow trout. This three-year research project is being funded by the National Science Foundation through Idaho EPSCoR, the experimental program to stimulate competitive research in Idaho. One of the goals of the project is to help create infrastructure to make scientists competitive for additional grants and funding. EPSCoR was critical in the establishment of the station and provided the necessary uh, funding to get us off the ground. Since then, we've grown from uh, a small operation with a limited budget to uh, a fairly substantial operation uh, and uh, it's self-sustaining in terms of grants and contracts and very competitive in the, in the research world and also developing a national and international reputation. This current grant is helping to make the research team even more competitive. The Idaho researchers believe one key to understanding how fish adapt is understanding how a fish partitions its food energy and how this is affected by environmental changes. So we're interested in looking at the interplay between these environmental effects and the genetics of the fish and understanding what's driving the growth process and what's driving energy utilization and partitioning between maintenance and growth. So we get changes in gene expression, we get changes in physiology, we get changes in behavior, we certainly get changes in growth. The scientists are not satisfied simply with seeing changes in behavior and physiology. They want to know why the fish changed. The energy partitioning takes place in the cells of the fish at the molecular level, where actions are dictated by specific genes. Both graduate and undergraduate students are gaining valuable experience in the lab as they isolate and map the genes of these fish. In order for DNA to function, or in order for some of it to function, it has to become RNA. That RNA then is written or rather is translated into proteins. First we use trizol RNA extraction and that's 
a way of taking the RNA out of the tissue from the fish and isolating it so it's all by itself. Uh, we examine the expression of these genes in these animals when they're exposed to the same environment. So, for instance, uh, if we feed rainbow trout and zebrafish the same diet, do their genes respond in similar fashions? The team is bridging the gap between conventional physiological assessments and gene expression to understand how genomic responses to nutrients cause differences in fish performance and health status. We look at their blood, we look at their heart, we look at muscle, we look at liver. Uh, we are basically doing health assessment when we do physiology. We take samples, we measure a number of things in the tissues. We think that uh, the behavioral changes that are happening in that process um, are a result of uh, selection that occurs to uh, increase the appetite because we've, we're seeing linkages between appetite in fish and behavior, fear-based behavior in fish. In the second year of their study, the scientists are focusing on lipids, specifically unusual fatty acids in aquatic insects and crustaceans that trout eat, and how they may have metabolic effects beyond their known role as sources of metabolic energy. The hypothesis is that certain fatty acids have regulatory roles in the changes in metabolism and energy storage that occur as the seasons change between summer and winter. The diets these fish are eating are very, very different than we thought in terms of their fatty acid profile. There's some very unusual fatty acids that we're finding in some, some uh, prey items in some areas. And, and these fatty acids aren't simply lipid sources or energy sources, they're important precursors for other metabolic pathways that are connected with, uh, with maturation, with reproduction, with immune response, and with the endocrine system. Understanding the mechanisms of energy partitioning is fundamental to understanding how fish adapt to various environments. The work of the Idaho team is developing new ways to understand the preferences of fish from both a physiological and a genomic perspective. Ultimately, this combined approach will provide better ways to assess fish health and habitat and guide the management of water resources. Since the needs, water needs of endangered trout dictate allocation of water, it's critical for us to really have sound scientific information upon which to base these decisions of water allocation.